guys, Terry Herning here with Real Food Mom. And we just got back from a family vacation and I wanted to cover a topic that many food allergy families can relate to and that's eating when you're traveling and what you have uh, access to, how we pack for that, how we plan as a family. And I'm just gonna tell you, it must have looked pretty funny. We had one suitcase of clothes and toiletries and everything for four individuals. And we had two giant suitcases with food. Now, we went into Mexico, into Rocky Point. And um, so please, if you're going into another country, make sure that you know what is allowable to bring. Um, sometimes you can't bring meats, sometimes you can't bring fruits and vegetables. Same thing with the return trip. So you have to just plan accordingly. And really, I grew up in Southern California, right across the border from Mexico. So I was very familiar with going into in and out of Mexico, no problem. But those are in my much younger days and we certainly didn't have food allergies to contend with and I wasn't a mom at that point. And so this is the first time I've crossed the border and had to do shopping and um, things like that. So what we packed were kind of the necessities in my mind of things that I knew everybody could eat. So um, we brought boxes of the Simple Mills uh, Paleo Almond Flour Crackers. We brought lots of nuts. Um, I love macadamia nuts and almonds and walnuts and even seeds like pumpkin seeds and sunflower seeds. I made up a really big batch of granola. We had dried unsweetened bananas. Um, I definitely made sure I had bread substitutes on hand. And while most of the time we do a paleo diet and um, for my husband and I, a ketogenic diet, when we were traveling with the kids, I did rely a lot on sandwiches and hamburgers if we were traveling. in and out is one of our favorites and they do a great job of doing protein style burgers and sometimes I'll bring buns for the kids, whether it's Canyon Bakehouse or Udi's or name your favorite brand. And those were things that I could freeze and easily bring with us if we were gonna be eating out. Um, usually a hamburger is a pretty safe bet. I just ask that there's no seasonings, obviously no butter on the grill, if they do that. Um, French fries, I always ask if they are fried in a fryer that does other things like um, fish patties or chicken patties or onion rings, anything that's breaded with wheat because those proteins can be problematic, especially for people who are very sensitive. So those are some good questions to ask. I also really was proactive on breakfast. So before we left, I did um, bulk baking, which is what I do usually anyways, because I'm all about efficiency and I don't want to be cooking breakfast every morning. I want to have healthy options that are in the freezer for my kids to just heat and eat that is not a Lego My Ego or a processed product that has a lot of sugars and starches and carbs. So I did uh, lots of paleo muffins. I did paleo scones with cassava flour. Hour. Um, I want to say we blogged on that uh, recently and um, froze them and that way they stay really good in the cooler and it can actually kind of help cool everything else. So of course I always overcook and over prep and over pack but I would rather have too much food than not enough food. We hit up the Sam's Club in, um, in Rocky Point and I was able to score grass-fed beef fajitas at an incredible price. Um, what are some of the other things that we found? Certainly fruits and vegetables were plentiful. One of the things um, that you need to be aware of is that there was zero in the way of gluten-free breads. Now, uh, granted, I went to the Lay supermarket, I went to Sam's Club, and I did go to one of their organic juice bars. The organic juice bar had great things like um, chia seed, hemp seed, protein powders, um, cold pressed juices, uh, wonderful things like that. Coconut oil, that was one of the only places I found coconut oil, but they had zero in the way of gluten-free. 
Um, and I didn't get a whole lot of time to check out Sam's Club. Um, we had just gotten into town. We kind of wanted to stock up on just a few things. We couldn't bring meat across the border. So we wanted to stock up on a few things like that and then check into our condo and get to relaxing. So I really tried to pack as much as I could prior to all of that. But um, when we did look around, we did go to the Lay supermarket. Uh, I found nothing that was gluten-free in terms of breads and buns and things like that. Of course, corn tortillas, obviously gluten-free. Um, you know, so there were other options that you could get creative with. But in terms of what we really expect as the norm in our country, as far as gluten-free breads and things like that, I did not see that at all. So it really is helpful to kind of know what to expect. We went down relatively blind in terms of not really knowing what they were going to have. I mean, other than the staples of fruits and vegetables and meats, which um, in a perfect world is great for us anyways. Um, being on vacation, I honestly didn't want to spend my whole vacation cooking in the kitchen. And so we did a couple of rounds of cooking, big, you know, batch things of, um, chicken breast and roasted red potatoes, easy peasy, throw them in the oven, pretty much done deal. We can eat a few meals from that, lots of salad. Um, and then other than that, I did rely a lot on the convenience stuff for lunch. Mom wanted a little bit of a break too. I'm sure you can relate, um, parents. Um, sometimes vacation is just a chain of change of scenery and we're still doing all of our stuff and that really doesn't allow us to feel refreshed. So I did really kind of bring the gluten-free breads and, um, got some lunch meat and really made it easy. We did bring some boxes of gluten-free pasta, a couple of jars of sauce, and um, and and a lot of those. Uh, we did bring the Birch Benders Paleo um, pancake mix, never even used it. We had so many breakfast items that it really um, never got used and that was easy to transport back with us, no problem. Um, so again, if you're traveling out of the country, just be aware, we have really traveled the country, um, even flying. Um, we love Southwest because we get free check bags and uh, our trip last uh, October to Orlando, we had suitcases full. Our local Sam's Club at the time had organic grass-fed beef jerky. Um, again, lots of the crackers, pasta. We would do jarred sauces. I typically don't like, a, I mean, sorry, canned sauces. And I'm typically not a fan of canned sauces, especially tomato sauce because of the acidity in the tomatoes. Most of the linings, even if they're BPA-free, BPA-free doesn't necessarily mean chemical-free or toxin-free. And so I'm really cognizant about that. But in these cases, sometimes you just have to, you know, go with it and help detox when you get back and um, not stress about that. And so we did canned sauces of pasta sauce. And when we got to our hotel in Florida after, you know, seven hours of traveling and kids were tired and hungry and dealing with time change, I was able to get a boiling pot of water going and pasta dinner on the table in like 15 minutes. And for us, that was awesome. So um, some of the things that we do are Pack what you can pack. Um, we brought some organic potato chips with us for the lunches. Um, be aware of what you can and can't bring into a country or a destination. Um, make sure that your uh, packaging is going to withstand the travel. I threw a lot in rolling um, suitcases because when you're trying to get everything up to your hotel room, Nobody wants to be lugging multiple bags and everybody saying their their arms are full and they're too tired and no no no. So we went with the suitcase route. Everybody grabbed a wheelie bag, drug it up to our rooms. It was really smooth. And um I remember things like power packs. I love the power packs by Trace Minerals. Great um, electrolytes um, into the kiddos and really kind of went with the staples, made sure that we had lots of nuts and seeds for um, traveling and getting that protein level up and the blood sugar remaining stable. Um, and one thing about Mexico is they there were a lot of options in terms of fresh fruit on the beaches. Um, I asked a lot of questions, of course, in my limited Spanish and 
even went into some pharmacies and asked them questions about pharmaceuticals and what was available over the counter versus the United States. And um, a lot of their dried fruit is just simply dried fruit. And so it was really um, an amazing experience because we kind of got to see what the food supply looks like in, uh, in Mexico as opposed to here. Um, of course, I asked about GMOs. I don't know that I got, um, I, I wish I would have been able to talk to farmers, growers, um, people like that, uh, but I wasn't able to. But I did ask around about GMOs and tried to get some information on pesticides and things like like that. Um, but it was a great experience. Our family had an absolute blast. Um, we actually brought back a bunch of food because once again, I overpacked. But again, I would rather have kids um, full and happy on the trip than being hangry and, you know, arguing and bickering amongst themselves because they're hungry. So some tips and tricks for travel and let me know what your favorite travel diet tip is if you are a family with food allergies because we would love to share it with the rest of our viewers and listeners. Thanks. Have a great day.